Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining me once again today, and welcome back to the battle for Westnoth. We're right where we left off in the middle of the Lost General scenario. We're 16 turns in, and we're doing some pretty good work. We've got a Dwarvish Steelclad advance. We've also gotten a Dwarvish Thunderguard advance, so two level 2 Dwarvish units. Very, very nice. Um, we've got a mage real close to leveling up. And down here we've got another Dwarvish Thunder about halfway. Um, we do have some enemies incoming, so... Uh, definitely standing on this 60% terrain with Palazzo is the right move here because we've got an assassin and a crossbowman coming in. They're probably going to be able to kill him. Not going to lie, he's probably going down like right now. But we should be able to move support over across this road terrain on which all of my units can move very quickly. We should be able to get some support over to help unless this crossbowman goes over here to attack the steel clad, which would be foolish, but then the AI sometimes does foolish things. So let's end the turn and find out. Okay, yep, poisoned. Uh, oh, he lived. He's not happy, but he lived. Okay, so this mage. Uh, boy, if I could kill that crossbowman, that'd be really clutch. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, because there's a dwarf on it. What's your movement cost there? Two. One, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, if this guy dies, I could put Conrad there. Or I could just pull this Dwarvish Fighter back. Because what I'm thinking is, if I can hit this this Orc Crossbowman in melee, and then hit him with the Mage, I can kill him. Or, if I could hit him with the Dwarvish Thunderer. If I could get up to where I have a 60% chance to kill, um, it'd be worth taking the shot, because then this Thunderer would be very close to leveling up. So let's pull this guy back real quick. Let's get our Steelclad over this way, to kind of block off the area. It looks like I've got some... That's mine wall up there. Let's get you right on this 50% terrain and go in with the sword. Four straight hits. Exactly what I wanted. Now, yeah, I'm going to go with the mage because the mage has a higher chance to hit and gets three shots. So I can be more certain of actually scoring the kill. Alright, good. So we're going to level up this guy into a... We already have a couple of white mage... of red mages. We could use some more healers. So we're going to level him up into a white mage. And that will also let him heal that guy. Meanwhile, we're going to come over here and try to entangle this assassin. To make him worse. Or not. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's swing around behind. With our other units. And we can put Delphidor up that way. I think that should be about all of the orcs cleaned out. The music is actually, the music may actually be audible to you, which is a nice change. I think often there's been trouble with the music not being audible. And let's swing that guy up there. He has five movement points. One, two, three, four, five. So he can get there next turn if he wants to kill. Yep, he's definitely going to poison people, but this white mage will cure all of the poison this turn. Excellent. Let's go in with the sword real quick, do some work. Not quite enough work. Now, let's see if our Thunderer can get the kill. 40%, try it. Nope. No joy in Mudville. Um, he's leveling up distressingly quickly as well, so I think I want my Steelclad to go beat on him. Just to see if I can actually kill him. Real quick. Uh, the Hammer has a 64% chance to kill. Let's do that. Nope. No joy. Um, yeah, Entangle. Okay, now he's slowed, at least. This Dwarvish Fighter just sit right there to heal up. Let's grab the village. Um, there is some castle down here. And that is shallow water that I could technically move through as well. But let's move up in this direction. And yeah, there's a keep. So what we want is we want our, uh... We want our good buddy Conrad to get to that keep so that he can, uh... Recruit some more troops, because we're a little bit short on men at the moment. Please stop throwing knives at Conrad. Well, Conrad leveled, which is nice. Let's try one more time to give experience to this guy. Um, this time we'll go in with the dagger, since it's two attacks. There we go. Excellent. He is still poisoned, so we'll want to cure him up. So let's go there, let's go there. Conrad. Um, Send this steel clad down to see if there's another keep somewhere. I don't see one. Hmm. Let's take that, take that. You can push up that way, we can take that. And Conrad then, I guess, can run up there. That'll take three turns to get there, but I'll be able to pump out some more dwarves, which is what I really want. 
Ah, the earth shakes. Excellent. Okay. Take that. Um, you can just move down. You don't need you uh, healing on that particular spot right at the moment. We can get our white mage down here. Bring our units that could still use a little bit of topping up. And our steel clad can head... Aha! Enemy unit. That is a troll warrior. Very, very nasty unit. Very high damage melee attack. Fortunately, steel clads, of course, are resistant to impact damage by 30%. So this attack, this 25 damage hammer... Uh, against steel clads actually only does 18 damage, which is still a lot, don't get me wrong. But steel clads can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with troll warriors to an extent. They won't like it, but they won't be instantly murdered either. So I should be able to, to fight him to some degree with these units here. And I may be able to level up my Thunderer, although I cannot let the Thunderer get hit. If the Thunderer takes, I think it'll take two hits. Yeah, if the Thunderer takes two hits, he'll die just die outright. So he must be on defensive terrain in order to fight that guy. Uh, but we'll go up here, recruit some more dwarves. We've got our units moving down in the proper direction. All right, Conrad, let's get some more recruits going. Let's get some dwarvish fighters and some dwarvish thunderers. Let's go three fighters, two thunderers real quick. And that should be good enough for now. Um, you just stand on that village for a second. Now you, sir, advance that way. You, sir, advance that way. We'll get our other Dwarvish fighter right like that. Um, yeah, see, 60% chance to hit versus 40%. So even though the damage is lower... Um... Mm, Actually, hold up. Why does it show... Oh, yeah. Okay, so I have a, we have a 48% chance to each take one hit, but he has a much higher chance to take two hits than I do. But what we're actually going to do, since we're just kind of... Yeah, let's go in with the hammer real quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Pardon my cough. All right, so... Uh, that was fine. I can take another two hits without dying, and he's on 60% defense terrain. So we'll be all right. Let's just kill this guy out. And it looks like we've got another green unit down there. Like right down here, do you see that on the minimap? There's a green... Oh, that's the village, I guess. Uh, he's summoned a dwarven, he's recruited rather, a dwarvish warrior, which is uh, irritating. But we'll push our units forward, we can go there, we can have you there. Um, I really don't want this Dwarvish fighter to actually, like, fight. I would rather just shoot him with guns. Or not. Or you could not shoot him with guns, I suppose. That's also an option. Get this guy with some light beams real quick. Just to keep him worked up. Uh, the Dwarvish steel clad is actually going to stand here and tank a little bit. Since with the, the healing of the White Mage, assuming the White Mage survives, which he should because he can run away if necessary, um, we can just afford to just out-tank this guy. Might take a little while, but we can do it. Yeah, there is. There's another green. There's something green down there in the water. So we want to send somebody to cross the water if we can. Ouch. Okay, we need to run. It is white mage run time. Definitely, definitely white mage run time. Let's go in with the hammer again real quick. Okay, 14 damage. That's fine. Um, this guy only needs six more experience, so just, yeah, just shoot your gun at him real quick. You can move back, you can entangle to slow him down and lower his damage, or not, or you could not. I mean, I suppose not is always an option. And let's have you moving very slowly up towards that while Delphador comes down. You can come down. Uh, I mean, we've got another 30 plus turns, so there's definitely something else on the map. I don't remember this scenario. Full disclosure, it's the Lost General, and I think if I recall correctly, there was the the overarching plot line of this whole thing turned out to be that there was an undead, like, Loyalist General somewhere in the caves, but I don't think it was this scenario, actually. I mean, it might have been. He might be across the water. Okay, well, that was sort of expected. All right. Ah, yes, there he is. There are undead in these pits. 
So what we want to do is we want to finish this guy off if we possibly, possibly can. He's got 38... 35 experience. Oof. Ouch. Okay, he's at 24 health. I need to do 10 more damage to him. Let's actually let this guy die. If he gets hit once, he'll die. Um, if he gets hit... He'll have to get hit twice for this guy to kill him, but he also won't be able to drag him down low enough. So yeah, we're gonna sacrifice the body here. Okay. So he's at 15. Ah, 15. Jesus. Damn it. Alright, Kalens. The fairy fire has a 96% chance to kill. I don't want Kalens to get the kill. I want Delphidor to come up here with the staff. 36% chance to kill, 40% chance to take a whoopin'. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. And now, shoot the gun. 60% chance to kill. Bang, bang, go for it. You're a disappointment. You're a huge, huge disappointment. Um, that actually puts me in kind of a weirdly precarious situation. Like, I may lose this guy, but if either of them attack and don't kill him, he'll level up instantly. Which will, uh, save his life. So that'll be fine. In the meantime, let's get some dwarves flooding down here. Now, thunderers are actually bad against skeletons because they do piercing damage, and skeletons are hugely resistant to piercing damage. If we look at the unit, they have 60% pierce resist, but they have negative... Impact resist. So dwarven fighters, dwarvish fighters with hammers do super, super well against them. Actually, Conrad, you should go over this way to take that throne and that keep and uh, recruit some more dudes. Because I think we'll need some more dudes, what with all these skeletons coming after us. All right, level and level. Whoop. Okay. Push down onto the... Nope, don't push down onto there. That's a 30% defense terrain. Push down like this. And like that. And like that. Now, over here. Let's give the Steel Clad the kill right here. If we can. Oh, uh, we can't really. Uh, yeah, we can. No, we can't. Let's give the Thunder Guard the kill. If we can. Come on. Oh, you suck, and I hate you. All right, fine. Fine. I guess you want Delphidor to kill him. I suppose that's what you're looking for. I can't go there. He'll take... He'll be He'll be killed by a greatsword. Uh, I might straight up lose my Thunderguard right now. I mean, he has 60% defense. But he's got these blade attacks coming in that deal 10 damage, so if he gets two hits from them and then gets hit by a dagger or two throwing knives, he will die. Um, I'm a little bit, I'm very, uh, <laughs> let me be clear, I'm very unimpressed by this. The odds were very much against it, against this situation. Yeah, I'm, uh, hmm, I missed a couple of swings that I really should have. I mean, the enemy has missed some swings they should have, but that swing would have been on Delphidor. Uh, and I can't move my white mage to heal him, so uh, we'll see how that goes. In the meantime, this guy is going to be kind of pummeled, but then these guys will sweep in to rescue him. Let's see if the Thunderguard lives. Oh, Thunderguard's probably going to live. Well, there we go. Okay. That Skeleton Archer is boned. And that's not entirely a Skeleton Pun, although it is also a Skeleton Jump. Alright, let's just shoot some guns at him since we can. Swing some hammers at him, since we definitely can. There we go. That archer, we're gonna swing some hammers at him as well, with an 80% hit chance. And swing a couple more hammers. Excellent. You can take that village back. And then you can come down there. Alright. Alright. This whole situation needs to stop. Um, 30%. Oof. Just shoot him. Or not. I mean, you don't have to, I guess. Please kill him. Thank you, and you, sir. Kill him. Excellent. Glad to have you on the team. Kalens, you're so slow. It's a little bit distressing. Conrad's gonna have to wait one more turn, because our fat dwarven dude is blocking that, but that's fine. 
We're doing okay. Oh, Lord, they've got a bone shooter. They've got leveled units, people. Leveled units. This is not a drill. Sound the alarm, Bill. Come wind, come rack. At least we'll die with harness on our back. All right, so we need some more dwarvish fighters. We need a couple more dwarvish thunderers. And we could probably use some mages. Let's recruit a mage or two just for the really high hit chance. And with that, we're off. All right, down here. That guy's got to go. And fortunately, he's standing in the water right next to the edge. So we can just kind of, once again, we can execute the time-honored dwarvish strategy of hitting him with hammers until he goes away. Wow. Two misses on 80% hit chance. What are the odds? Actually, I know the odds. The odds are uh, 4%. Those are the odds. Um, I don't really want to send a Thunderer into the water, so we're just going to move there. That guy's going to get killed again. The one who's built up some experience will be murdered because this guy will shoot him with no retaliation. And then probably this guy will move up onto the, the beach. So that's incredibly frustrating. But at least this Bone Shooter will die next turn. There's no possible way. His odds of surviving, let me put it this way, are very low. Possible, but very low. Well, at least he got a little bit more damage off. But now there's another Bone Shooter. Wow. Alright, so that guy's got 12 HP. Um, we've got, we need our dwarves to be moving. Moving on up, moving on out. Running with the gang. Kalenz, you can just stay there and be slow. Get the mages moving as well. Thunderers moving. Okay, yeah, this is the problem with these scenarios. There's just, you you move so slowly. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, kill him. You are all the worst. Legitimately the worst. Okay, that Thunderer might be able to level. That guy's damaged, but certainly not dead. Down here, we can kind of trade some dagger strikes. At even, at basically even, but he has a lot more HP than I do, so we need to get in. And your dagger oddly does less damage. Why is that? Why did his damage do six? His dagger do six. You're not chaos, you're not lawful. I don't know. Oh no, it only did four. Never mind. All right, well, we're just gonna have to kind of try to hold our ground here against these skeletons that are advancing. It's not gonna work very well. It's really not gonna work very well, but well, if they fight from, if they continue to fight from the water, it'll be okay. We just gotta get rid of this guy before he causes serious trouble. Please don't. All right. And charge. The charge of the Dwarf Brigade continues. Oh, we can't charge that far because we need our heals. The very slow, it's more like the Mosey of the Dwarf Brigade, really. The Saunter of the Dwarf Brigade. Uh, the Meditative Stroll of the Dwarf Brigade. Something like that. Now down here, I would love to get rid of this Bone Shooter. But I would also, yeah, okay, I think I can. I think I can get rid of the Bone Shooter. Okay, he's got 11 health. Let's dagger him. That's fine. And then this guy is actually going to move off of the village in order to provide a little bit of cover because Alum Doral might get murdered. He's only on 50% defense terrain, so I kind of need to... Do some damage to this guy so that when he comes in, because he's going to come up here and try to attack a Lumdural. So I need him to be low enough health that when he does that, shit. I might lose my Thunderguard. My Thunderguards, I tell you, can't keep him alive for nothing. Alright, okay, this guy needs to hit every strike if he wants to kill him. Okay, excellent. A Lumdural with sheer dwarven stubbornness, pulls through. Um, he has 10 health. Let's get this Thunderguard. I can go there or I can go there. 60% <clears throat> hit. 
also 60% hit. Let's go down there, because I want to kill that guy with the... Yeah, okay, good. Oh, that was actually a kill shot. I thought it was only 11 damage. I thought he had 12 health. Well, oh well. Okay, fine. No! I tried to click on the thunder stick. But you know what? That worked. Like, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna worry about it too much. If it works, it works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Now, going through the caves, we're kind of just going to have to let the dwarves go first because they're uh, faster in caves. So let's get everybody lined up to move. Okay, that's a loyal. Broheim, we're just going to hold the edge real quick. Uh, step out of the step aside, please. Um, and now, like I said, it's going to be a matter of kind of cramming dwarves through this passage. Like, Narasil, actually just, just run ahead. Free up some space for dwarves. Um, Oagik, I guess you can stand there and be a living roadblock if you like, but really this is a dwarf show at this point. Like, the other units just can't get there fast enough most of the time. Alright, here he comes. We're gonna kill him. Another bone shooter. That I don't like. Let's get some thunder stick action if we can. 32, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, he's down to 19. Let's get some Thunder Stick on him there. Uh, I don't want them double teaming that guy, but there's not a really good way to stop it. Let's put Conrad up there to kind of like, like distract them a little bit, like be, a, be an attractant. You know, attract their attention. They're probably, like, almost certainly, knowing the West Knot AI, they're going to try and double-team this guy, because he only has 25 HP. But he is on 60% defense, so he may well survive. Yep, told ya. Called it. Nope, he's dead. He's deader in Disco. Oh my god, is he gonna... Nope, he's dead, I told ya. Fuck you, undead. You're the worst. Killing the guys who were just about to level. Alright. Take your shot. Uh, let's get you right there for leadership. Take your shot. Excellent. Got rid of him. Come down here and take your hammer. 80% hit rate and we keep missing. It's ridiculous. It is actually stupid. And a little bit infuriating. Put you right there. Get the Thunderers moving up. And now we can start cramming the mages into this hole, too. And you, yeah, just going with the hammer, bro. There you go. Excellent. My Steel Clad is actually really close to leveling up. If I can get a level 3, if I can get him up to a Dwarvish Lord in this game, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, 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 you suck. Everyone hates you. Hammer. Hammer. And, ooh, one health off. Uh, yeah, hammer. There we go. Hey, Dwarvish Lord. Level max level Dwarvish unit in the very first scenario where I'm using dwarves. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Dwarvish Lords are great. I love them. Love them to bits. And let's get ready to push our dwarves into the water. Unfortunately, dwarves are very slow in the water, but then everybody's very slow in the water, so it doesn't matter all that much. So we're going to uh, bravely sail the seas in a strong and dwarvish fashion. Go over there to heal everybody. A lot of our units are just going to be left behind because, like, getting across the water with them is a huge pain in the ass. Uh, go over there, okay. This is why this uh, scenario has such a long time limit, by the way. Because, moving across even a very small lake one space at a time with dwarves can be a problem. I'm going to send that dwarf that way. My doughty dwarvish lord. Aha, there is the undead general. 
Lionel, the Lost General, will avenge himself upon you all. Excuse me, now Lionel's a Death Knight. He's a level 3 of a skeleton unit. Avenge, what have we done to you that you must avenge? Let's talk about it. Lionel, a general, I remember that name. The king's finest general sent down to these pits to retrieve the scepter, but the orcs trapped me and my men in this cavern to starve to death. The dwarves were no help, leaving me to die. Now I will get revenge upon you all. Wow, man, take a chill pill. So, he automatically spawns, as soon as he says that, three revenants, which are level two skeletons that I think we've seen before. He's a level three skeleton, so he has leadership. He has a very, very powerful battle axe attack, and he also has a crossbow. So, uh, a little bit better in melee than revenants, Lots of HP, leadership, and a ranged attack. So we're gonna, we're just gonna pull back a little bit. And the white mage, of course, is gonna be very, very helpful here. Um, as will some entangling, so, and potentially some magic for fighting the revenants. I would like to have everybody, but like I said, they're all very slow. Fortunately, this dwarf lord should be able to pretty much hold the line, um, especially with a little bit of thunderstick support, and of course the hammers. Now, what I'd like, though, would be I'd like to actually give the experience to this Dwarvish fighter. And I'd also like nobody to get super ganged up on. So we can go over here and take his villages. Dwarvish fighter, 50%, 60% terrain. That's about as good as I'm going to get. We're going to put the Dwarvish Lord on the 50. The fighter on the 60. Get Conrad up there. Get the White Mage moving in that direction. Uh, actually, this guy has been patiently waiting for a long time. I'd like to level him up to a Dragon Guard as well. So, go in with the hammer. Excellent. And now, this Dwarvish fighter can go in with the axe and score the kill. Wow. Oh my god. Dolkatil, you are the worst. <laughs> what were the odds? 60% three times. All he needed to do was scratch the guy. Jesus Christ. Alright, well, the Dwarvish Lord gets that kill. And I'm gonna lose that Dwarvish Fighter. Okay, yep, that's expected. <clears throat> Alright, let's pull Narasil back real quick. Put Conrad up there. I don't really want to put Conrad up there. Let's get you up there. Dwarvish Thunderguard, I don't want to be on forest, so just go up there and take a cheeky pot shot. Conrad can be on the forest, providing a little bit of cover, but this Thunderguard is still in a very precarious position. We'll go over there, start taking villages. These guys can push down. Yep, 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 yep. Push down into the water with ye. Uh, oof, yeah, Narasil kind of needs to come in and kill that guy real quick. Yeah, okay, I'm given a lot of- I've given Narasil 40 experience now, which would have sufficed to level up most of my other units. But, like, I needed to make sure this guy didn't get axed to death. Alright. Uh, yeah. Are you serious? Are you serious? I guess Narasil gets more experience! Narasil just wants to hog all the kills. He just wants all the experience, all the glory for himself. Uh, Narasil doesn't care about anybody else. Narasil is only interested in being the biggest, baddest Dwarf Lord there can be. And everyone else just goes along with it. Everyone else is enabling Narasil right now. He's just... Nobody else gets any experience but Narasil. That's the rule, apparently. Alright, so. Now... We're gonna do this. Because his crossbow attack is not great. So we're just gonna blast him with the thunder stick a little bit. Now he can swing back very, very powerfully with his axe. But thunder guards are tough enough that he would have to hit them with every strike in order to actually kill them. Uh, and the odds of that are very low. So we can cycle those guys out and uh, maintain our, our edge, as it were. And this guy will level if he kills Lionel. Yep. <coughs> so, he's got 30 health. The Light Beam has some chance to kill him, but it's okay if a White Mage gets experience. So let's go in with the Light Beam. Yep, there we go. Arg, I am vanquished. Rest in peace, Lionel, the poor lost general. 
I am destroyed, but my mission must be completed. So I will tell you the scepter is east from here, the way you have come from, deep in the caverns. I made the mistake of not asking for directions when I became lost. Wow. Okay, well, he's dead. The caves are vast. If we would find the scepter, we must hurry. We can see we got a little bit more experience on Oagik, who is fantastic. Uh, we, I can sense our path only leads us downward. That's a, a remarkable scepter sensing ability you've suddenly developed. And we will continue to the northeast to the deepest depths of the caverns. We get a ton of Karyogre gold. And uh, overall, that was a good scenario. A um, lot of losses, obviously, a lot of aggravation, but I did level up three dwarves, one of them twice. So I've got a Dwarvish Lord, which is a very, very tough, very resilient, very sturdy and uh, and powerful unit. And I've got two Dwarvish Thunder Guards, which have that burst damage. Plus, I have a White Mage. Oagik is has gotten his level finally. He's gotten his reward for being such a baller in the last mission and uh, in uh, outside the Dwarvish Doors. And so he'll be able to uh, help keep our healing up when Raniel, the, the Sylph, uh, is very, very slow in the caves. And if we look at our stats for this scenario, you can see we inflicted less damage and took more damage than we should once again. Um, yeah, we're just very, very, uh, we're a little bit unlucky. We've been a little bit unlucky this whole campaign. We've been unluckier in a lot of campaigns. We were a little bit lucky in the Elves Besieged, but Blackwater Port, oof, Blackwater Port was rough by the numbers. Um, Isle of Alduin, we were actually pretty good. Bay of Pearls, eh, a little bit, a little bit under the weather. Isle of the Damned, a little bit under. Siege of Alensafar, a little bit under. Crossroads, way under. Took a lot more damage than we should have. Princess of Westnoth, definitely under. Valley of Death, eh, okay, a little bit, a little bit up. Griffin Mountain, incredibly under. Like, Lady Luck hated me in Griffin Mountain. Hated, 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 hated. Uh, Fort of Abez, bad. Northern Winter, very bad. Dwarven Doors, uh, still actually negative overall. My my taken percentage was higher than my inflicted percentage, but I was at least inflicting more damage than I should have. Plunging into the Darkness, I didn't think I actually did anything in this scenario. Like, this was entirely a story. Oh, I killed a bat. Doesn't really matter. And then the Lost General, you can see, uh, very, very slightly under, but positive on the last uh, turn by random chance. So yeah, this scenario, this, uh, this campaign has been bad for me. Like the dice have not been rolling my way and I can confirm that by the, through the statistics. So I am actually unlucky. I'm not just whining <laughs> in any case. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next episode.